Will Glenn Hoddle lead from the front again and make it two out of two for Wiltshire's passing wizards? Or can Bristol Rovers carry on where they left off on Saturday? Super strike from John Taylor, too little, too late at Oxford. Good evening. Welcome to Midweek League Football and the first of six local derbies for West Clubs in the new First Division. Tonight, Bristol Rovers play host to Swindon Town. Swindon, thanks largely to player manager Glenn Hoddle, began the season with a win against Giant Sunderland, while Rovers were caught out by the new back pass law in going down at Oxford. Your match commentators at Twerton Park tonight, Mark Lawrenson, and first, Roger Malone. Well, a very warm welcome to First Division football for the first time ever at Twerton Park. A few years ago, you'd have got long odds against that ever happening. Bristol Rovers unchanged in personnel from Saturday's side, but they'll want to change up a gear from the form that lost 3-1 at Oxford. Swindon have every reason for keeping the same side that won on Saturday at home against Sunderland. Glenn Hoddle's team are hoping to repeat the smooth football that made chances for a bigger winning score. Well, with me, Mark Lawrenson, former Liverpool star, international player and league manager. Mark, your thoughts on tonight? Well, I think the first thing we have to say, Roger, is, is about the state of the pitch, which, that, which looks absolutely marvellous. I'm sure it will suit Swindon. They'll be delighted to come here so early in the season. They got a good result Saturday, especially with Hoddle's super goal. Bristol Rowers, on the other hand, were very, very disappointed at Oxford on Saturday, resulting in a 2-1 reverse, and they need to get some points on the board tonight. And as Swindon get the match in motion, Keith Burge from Tonopandi and Mid Glamorgan is the referee. Well, Rovers couldn't win at all in their first seven matches at the start of last season. Bottom of the table after 11 games, they sacked manager Martin Dobson, gave Dennis Rofe the job and blossomed again. Brian Parkin recovered from that Saturday knock and he's playing. Well, Swindon were uh, almost always amongst the teams challenging, uh, challenging for... Uh, well, I'll tell you what, there's a challenge there that's uh, incurred the wrath of uh, the referee. Mark, uh, a fierce challenge early in the game. Yeah, I think it's going to result in a booking for Mitchell, Roger. He just clattered into the, <laughs> into the keeper. And I think, I think the thing is, certainly, from a centre-forward's point of view, not a bad thing to let the keeper know that he's about, but it's resulted in the booking. OK, Brian Parkin fit again, and Ian Alexander will take the kick whilst those Parkin ankles settle down. Taylor, strong on the ball there, but too strong, says Mr Burge. OK, well, that little bit of uh, derby tenseness early on, Mark. Yeah, obviously both teams still feeling their way against it. Hoddle on the ball, and I think it's the first touch he's had, but certainly at the moment, Swindon looking to get forward at every opportunity, and they've got a corner. Yes, Yates having to police Ling there. Steve Yates, the England under-21 squad man who's not gone Premier League. Rovers fans are glad about that. Welsh international Paul Bowden to take the corner kick in, swinging left-footed. Got the big men up there in the box. Mitchell and the centre-backs will attack this too. And that's a very good effort there, and that Sean Taylor has scored. An excellent example of the way this big former Exeter lad gets forward at set pieces and knocks it in, Mark. Good, a good ball in. It's just an early run, really, by the centre-back. Gets in front of everybody, in front of the keeper, and sticks it in the corner of the net. Well, the Rovers crowd stunned by that early blow, uh, Alexander, but there's plenty of time for Alexander's team to get back into this. And a corner kick. Now, what are the things, Mark, as a defender that you're thinking about when you're facing a corner kick like Swindon do now? Well, obviously, the first thing, your, your big lads at the back are going to pick up the, the big strikers and the big centre-backs that come up. And really, Swindon don't want to fall for the sucker punch, which Rovers fell for. Hard of his kick is long. Digby came, Reese with a shot. And he had to get back there. Well, 
excellent goalkeeping in the end by Digby, having got himself in trouble, Mark. Yeah, that's right. It was, it was an initial mistake, but it was good enough to get back and just flick Priest's shot over the bar. It was a lucky Priest, actually. Reese does everything right, and so does Digby. He's come again with the punch and a repeat of it. And that's a super save again! My goodness me, from Harniman Mark. Well, you couldn't get better action than that, could you? No, it was almost an action replay of the first corner as well, wasn't it? Keeper did it much better that time, but he could only clear the ball to the edge of the box. And again, a good shot came in and he made another good save. Yet another corner for the Rovers. Can they get level? Pounder to take it. Digby determined to come and it comes again well. But it's Pounder. Taylor's back post. Oh, it was a great shot there by Ian Alexander. Well, what about that, Mark? The Rovers are doing everything but everything but score. Yeah, Alexander struck it well, struck it on the volley. And to be fair to Digby, he made a good save because he must have been very, very unsighted. Rovers playing down the slope, but they're a goal down. Saunders trying to get it off Hazard. Hazard really defending well back there, and another super little cheeky pass back. And Digby thumps it away under the new back pass situation. And this is Reese. Billy Clark. But Bowden's got it. Links Harry through the middle. There is Link. But Yates just gets across quickly. Good play by Yates. This is Hardiman. Lovely pass to Saunders. Turns inside. Hazard. There's the cross. This is Mayhew. Oh, my goodness me. Another great Rovers raid. And somehow Swindon survived. again a lovely Rovers move doing everything right and Swindon just surviving yeah Son is great ball at the at Mayo just gets in at the back gets his foot in it cleared I think by the big guy at the back the yeah Sean Taylor gets it away yeah Paul Bowden's throw Hoddle Monka didn't like that tackle from Reese. well uh, they're in there to tackle, and Andy Reese does it uh, for Rovers in midfield. But what did you think to that one, Mark? Monker is just going to nick the ball off him, and Reese comes in just that bit late, wasn't he, and caught him. Glenn Hoddle with the free kick. <whistles> Yates. Summerby. Mitchell, is he through? He is. It's a goal. It's there, an opportunist one. Mitchell read it quicker than anybody else and put Swindon two up, and Rovers can hardly believe that, Mark. Yeah. Huddles, Huddles free kick, so he does well, wins the ball. Look at the Rovers' defence, very, very static. Mitchell takes it on his chest and just flicks it over, parking. A very well-taken goal there for Swindon. But was he offside? I didn't think he was, Roger, no, when I first saw it. Paul Bowden. Maskell, nice layoff to Ling. This is Maskell through. Should be 3 0. No, his first touch has let him down. No, it, and that's a penalty, I would have thought. No, not given. Or has he given it? I thought it was the Yates tackle. My first reaction was that had to be a penalty. We shall have a look in a minute. Yeah, what do you good, think, little, good little ball, wasn't it? And he does well here, Mask, a little shape. And I think Yates just catches him from the back on the hill, and it looks a penalty. Can Brian Parkin prevent Rovers going 3 0 down? So here we go. Oh, yes, he gave it the full treatment, Mark. He went for power, and Parkin went the wrong way. Yeah, well struck penalty. And the thoroughly deserved goals. And always making him take it again, Roger. That'd be fine. Well, there we are. Someone must have encroached. He's signalling someone had encroached into the penalty area. And poor old Paul Bowden's got to do it all over again. Of course, it's more difficult for him now, isn't it? Well, now it's a, it's a game of thinking, isn't it? What, what does a goalkeeper do? So, Bowden again. Yes, other side of the net. Hit it hard again. Went for power. Well taken penalty twice, Mark. Clark. Carl Saunders, first time he's had it in the box, in space. 
There's a the chance for Mayhew, no. Reese. Oh, Rovers' best chance of the half in terms of moving football and the chance for Andy Reese. Yes, love a little ball in. Good challenge there. Came to Reese. Hit it first time, early left foot, just wide of the post. Carl Saunders, Hoddle making himself felt. Monker's got it. Lovely ball out to Ling. Cut out by Hardiman. It's a bit long for John Taylor, that. Swindon just looking to kill the game now, Roger. Can't be long left till half time. Yeah, we're coming up to the 45 minutes on the clock. There'll be the added time for the bookings and the injuries. So a couple of minutes to go. John Taylor. Hardiman through for Saunders. Can't gather that. Hoddle can, but Saunders has got it back. And a chance for Mayhew. And it's there! A very well-taken goal. Stemming from a Glenn Hoddle error. So Rovers back in the ball game, Mark. Yeah, Saunders, love a little ball in after Hoddle's error, as you say. Mayhew go in front of Bowden, love a little header down, keeper had no chance. So with a half-time to score then, a Bristol Rovers won, Swindon three mark, plenty to look forward to. Most certainly, yeah, Rovers started very, very static, Swindon have been by far away the best team, Roger. But Rovers left themselves a glimmer of light there with um, their opening goal with two minutes to go to half-time. We'll see you in a minute. Should be a cracker still to come. He's got a gamble, Roger, as we said before. He's, uh, he's either going to lose 5-1 or pull the game back and be a hero. So he's got he's to take that chance and put men forward. And Swindon's attitude now, uh, sit tight a bit or uh, just play the same? I think they'll just consolidate for a while, have a look at the way Rovers are going to play and keep probing away and hope to, hopefully at Rovers on the break, I would say. Well, there's John Taylor, uh, who has not had a lot of success in the first half, but he's battled hard, and uh, obviously Rovers hoping that young Marcus Stewart can give him a bit more support up front. Yeah, I think, obviously, the thing for Rovers, they'll look to hit Taylor, and they'll look for Saunders and Stewart to take all the bits and cause Swindon problems. I mean, Swindon play with five at the back. Rovers have now got three up front, so hopefully they're going to occupy more of Swindon defensively. Alexander. to Summerby, taking on Hardiman, like his dad used to, he's got away from him, Mike Summerby was an international, this lad's a good youngster, it's a good cross, it's a chance here, and it's in the net, and it's Mitchell, the scorer, what a wonderful start again for Swindon, and a terrible beginning for Rovers, Mark. Yeah, Summerby did well, Hardiman had a nightmare there, to be fair, great ball in, and Mitchell just gets in front of the boy at the back post. But what a wonderful example of young Summerby with the initiative to take on his man and beat him and set it up. Most definitely, but I think Hardiman will ask, be asking himself a question later on in the bath, Rog. Defensively, he looked very, very poor there. He let the boy slip past him far too easily. Taylor, John of that name, Skinner, from Marcus Stewart to challenge for. But Summerby having the better of that. And that's Ling. This is Hoddle. And that's Maskell. And an error there by Saunders. And away goes Mitchell. And the keeper's got to come for it. This is going to be a nasty collision. And it's just over the top. Wow, we. That man Mitchell again, Mark. He's dynamite tonight. Yeah, Alexander was, was very slow there. Mitchell throws himself at the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper does well. But that's what we're talking about this season when people could get injured. Certainly goalkeepers with this back pass rule, Roger. Looking at that one, Mark, I thought Brian Parkin was very brave there. Yes, he was, and uh, I'm surprised he came out with his feet. Actually. I thought he might have come out with his hands, which would have been a more sensible thing to do, but he's got away with it. Yeah. 
Chelsea. That's where Alexander would normally have passed back last season, but he's done well. He's turned, kept the ball and uh, played it forward well enough. I think it's uh, uh, a law that's going to improve the ability and skill of the back men, Mark. Well, I think if it does, Roger, that everybody will hold their hands up and say it's a good law. But the one thing about it is that it's, it's going to make for more entertaining football because people are going to make mistakes. Well, that mistake there was uh, a, a rash kick at the ball by Alexander, which hit something else, not the ball. And there's uh, a little bit of ill feeling about that one. And here comes the free kick. Well, it's part of the back pass law again. Didn't want to pass back lane. Great tackle by Stewart and a lovely early ball in. And Robe is just failing to get a touch. Good play. Steve Cross. Good all-round pro. Can play almost anywhere in the midfield and the back. Former Derby County player. But his team have got an awful lot to do if they're to get something tonight. Hoddle to Taylor. And Taylor's done well. It goes Stewart. It's there. A wonderful goal. Marcus Stewart. A superb opportunity ever for this young Bristol lad. Brought in to give Rome a better chance. A better chance. And hasn't he done it? Yeah. Hoddle wins the ball initially. But Taylor, Taylor does ever so well. He burst past Bowden all about strength. Lovely first time cross. And Stewart jumps ever so well for such a small fella. Plants a lovely head in the net. It's a great reply from Rovers. For my money so far, some of the outstanding player because he's covering the right-hand side all by himself. He helped to make the second goal. He helped to make the fourth goal. He's up and down there all the time. Monker. To Somerby. To Monker. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Chance there for nine, and it's Baskell, and it took a deflection of Andy Reese. Otherwise, that could have been number five. This is very interesting, Roger, because as you see, when the ball gets played in, it comes off Alexander. And did he stick his arm out? Ooh, I think the referee might have missed that one. You know. <laughs> well, we. Rovers deserve a well, not deserve a break. They certainly need a break. Well, they certainly need a break. That's for certain. Oh, shots here! Oh dear me! Wow, we and Mitchell got hurt there, Mark, as he headed that ball towards goal. A Rover's defensive boot going for the ball, connected with his head. That's painful. Here we are. The cutter comes in from the left, Roger. Hoddle, in fact, of all people, gets a flick on. Masco reacts quite quickly, look, looking to shield the ball, really, looking for someone to help him. Hard him on the wrong on the wrong side. The ball eventually squirms out, comes to Mitchell as a shot. Good save by Parkin, brave save. And then Billy Clark actually catches Mitchell in the side of the head. Alexander. Sean Taylor, a good man for a battle. Hardiman. To Mayhew. That's Stewart's got it again, Mark. Cross. Can he get the cross in? Well, here we go. 
I mean, it ends up a real scrum. The ball played in there by Cross. Saunders with the uh, overhead. Taylor with a shot. Scrambled away. Taylor back in. The keeper didn't want to pick it up because of the new back pass rule. Meanwhile, over at the corner flag, the arguments continue and the discussions continue with the linesman. Have we got the dreaded indirect free kick a yard for Palmer? We have. We have. Meanwhile, I think that it, it's either Alexander the two or... There it goes! And it's... it's no, it was scrambled off the line. Now it's in the net! Paul Hardyman! Mr Rovers, three, Swindon, four. Three or four minutes to go. Let's have a look at that, Mark. Here we go, just a little touch. The first initial one's blocked, the ball gets kicked out, and then Hardiman with the volley. Super strike. He'll be glad of that, because he's had a bad night tonight, Paul Hardiman. So. The Rovers crowd believe the miracle can happen. They've got two or three minutes. I say two or three because there'll be a lot of added time. It's a very nasty blow in the face there for uh, Ling. Hardiman was involved. Swindon players are furious. Here we go. Ling, Ling just looks to nick it past Hardiman. First touch. Nicks it past. And Hardiman, he just, cut, he just caught him with the side of his elbow. It wasn't particularly malicious. But the whole thing's erupted because of it. It's 4-3 now in added time. And no one who's been here tonight can complain about the entertainment value. The first first division match ever at Twerton Park, and it's been a rip-roaring entertainment for our midweek league football. This is Marcus Stewart. Wins the corner kick. There's the boy who's helped Rovers improve so much. Alexander to take it. They'll attack this one. Can Swindon hold the victory? Yes, they can. The game's over. Mark Lawrenson, what a cracker. Oh, a marvellous game of football, Roger. I have to say, it's slightly spoiled by the referee, but let's not take anything away from the two teams. Very, very good play by Swindon for 65, 70% of the game. Bristol Rovers came back into it, full of heart, forced away back into the game, and a 4-3 win for Swindon in what was a marvellous night for football. I couldn't agree more, Mark. Midweek league football well and truly launched tonight. Thank you, Roger and Mark. So Swindon go from strength to strength and another three points. For Rovers and Dennis Rofe, plenty to think about before Saturday. That's it for this edition of Midweek League Football. Hope you enjoyed our coverage and we'll see you next time round. Good night. much better than Rovers. Swindon are not only about delicate skills. Then Glenn Hoddle's free kick is met by Rovers but never cleared properly and they don't react as quickly as Dave Mitchell and that's 2-0. Swindon's accurate passing patterns often bewildered Rovers and this is Craig Maskell through, brought down by Steve Yates, penalty awarded Powered home by the Welsh international Paul Bodin. Greener. Well, the Rovers had made chances, but they were unable to beat Fraser Digby. And then they did just before half time through David Mayhew. Nice goal. Rovers alive now. But early second half and Swindon score again. Young Nicky Somerby having a superb night. He makes the opening. Mitchell's finish. That's 4 1. But now Rovers' two substitutions began to click, especially super young prospect Marcus Stewart. The youngster was to rise early 
and Launch Rover's late comeback. Lovely goal, 4-2. Rover's other substitute, Steve Cross, pushes them forward again, and then the arguments over the referee's decision to punish goalkeeper Digby over the new law about keepers not allowed to handle pass back made by foot. See it again in the quandary that Digby's in. He tries not to really handle it, he touches it there with his hand, but mostly he chests and torsos it away. A very difficult situation for the goalkeeper. But indirect free kick is given. Alexander smashes it, the ball squirms out like a piece of soap. Hardiman gets it in the net. 4-3, but Swindon hang on to win a tremendous match. 